Hello, and welcome to Success Stories for Small Energy Customers. Today, we will be learning about utility engagement and on-site solar. We are joined by Emily Umbarger from Interlochen Center for the Arts, who is supported in her clean energy journey by Lindsay Zion from Consumers Energy. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Excited to be here with you today. Um, as Ashby noted, my name is Lindsay Zion, and I am a manager of our renewable energy programs at Consumers Energy, the combo gas electric utility here in the state of Michigan. Uh, so we can go to the next slide. So my role um, with the company is program design, the voice of the customer, how might we accelerate renewable energy adoption here in the state of Michigan to expand the development of new renewable energy assets locally here in Michigan. And by doing so, we work with customers such as Emily with Interlock and Center of the Arts to big customers such as General Motors and everyone in between to advance clean energy adoption. So with our program, I uh, wanted to call out why our customers have found it as a good fit for them and why it might be of interest for you to reach out to your local utility and investigate what their green tariff programs are. Um, with our programs, it's a percent base. So you're going to enroll in a percentage that you want to match your, your energy use with renewable energy. Um, so it's flexible as your load grows or it declines because you become more sustainable and do energy efficiency projects. The contract will ebb and flow with your energy use. It's local, as I know, additionality in investing in the creation of new renewable energy resources close to your facilities. That's really important for our customers to have a local impact, generate economic development opportunities, jobs growth, tax returns for the local municipalities within the, or within the state or something that they can point to on the map that your dollars are investing in supporting the build out of renewable energy here in or local to your business. Um, and cost effective. So what's nice about the program is it is all on your utility bill. It's nice and bundled. It's a pay as you go system. You don't have to invest in upfront capital to uh, join the program. It's you pay on a month to month basis as you consume your energy. So there's no capital outlay that you would have to tie up with your renewable energy procurement. You can keep those dollars within your small business uh, to make sure that they're working for you. And we know uh, money is king around the board. We're trying to be as cost effective as possible. So this provides a really easy solution for you to go green and pay as you go without tying up a bunch of funds. And then lastly, um, it's really it's meant to be turnkey and simple. Our goal as the utility provider is to expand renewable energy access to as many of our customers as possible and make it extremely simple. So there's no on-site construction um, at your facility and we will own, operate and maintain that renewable energy resource and provide that rec retirement every single year for you to have that attestation so you can retire those recs or will retire those recs on your behalf um, so really your carbon accounting can be really streamlined and simple. So those are kind of the high levels of what you should be looking for in a green tariff or the some of the pros for a green tariff is right on your utility bill and it should be relatively easy for you uh, to participate and change and adjust your subscriptions. So next slide. So Beyond me talking about it, the best voice of our programs and the value comes from our customers. Over the past year, we've had a lot of customers interested in the program, and you'll, I'm sure you'll see stories like this across the nation with different utilities of customer engagement and the why behind it. Um, I'll call out here in the middle, um, we have the quote from Interlochen when we did our celebration and press release for them joining the program. Um, it's very important for our customers that it's, it's here in Michigan, it's a local impact and it's their opportunity to um, better serve their customers in a meaningful way that they can point to and show what their dollars are being put towards. So 
I, I know that this is recorded and you probably will get the slide, so I won't go too far into that. But um, the next slide just has my contact information. And what I will end with before we jump over to Interlochen is just talking about how we are um, hearing the need for small businesses to have more options available at a price competitive um, value. As right now, our large customer renewable energy program is really situated and was initially founded targeting those large business customers, those really high electric users. Um, this year, I'm happy to share next week, we're filing with our Michigan Public Service Commission to expand our renewable energy program to all customer classes, residential, small to medium business, and anywhere in between with our large business customers. Um, in doing so, we did a lot of research with our small business segment, and we're incorporating their preferences in, into the program design. So I am so excited to be with all of you today uh, to hear what's important to you and to help us better evolve and streamline our programs to meet your needs. A couple of the differences between our biz, big customer program and our small business program is one, we're going to create more predictable pricing by providing a levelized enrollment. Um, so right now, our large customers, they pay as they go and their subscription will ebb and flow with their usage. We know that predictability and having a set price is more um, in line with what our small businesses want to see. So we're creating that. We're also creating, instead of having a formal contract to enroll with longer term lengths, we're creating a shorter contract, a minimum of 12 month enrollment for our small business customers so that they have that flexibility because we know when things come up with our small business owner, they have to be agile. They have to work out to make sure that their business can survive in certain scenarios. So we're making it a more flexible for them to enroll. So those are just a couple of things that we've taken away and are incorporating into our small business design, but uh, it'll be submitted in front of our uh, Public Service Commission here next week, and we expect to get a positive uh, acceptance of this next year so that will roll out. So I'll take any questions or I'll kick it over to Emily. All right, I'm going to say no news is good news, Lindsay. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Thank you guys. <laughs> They're all excited to go. Uh, all right, well, my name is Emily Umberger, and I'm the Director of Sustainability at Interlochen Center for the Arts. I also am um, a high school science teacher, so I teach agricultural science and regenerative agricultural biology, so I have kids in all four years of science uh, in our high school. But um, I wanted to share with you a little bit about kind of how we came to this place of talking about energy. Why is a school talking about energy here with you today? Go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So in 2016, um, our board of trustees, which is much like a public school board, um, they came out and said, listen, we should really be doing something with sustainability we are not even recycling very well at this institution. And in 2016, there's no excuse for not being able to recycle well as an institution, um, much less a really beautiful uh, private institution that we are up here in the woods of Northern Michigan, Interlochen, literally translates between two lakes. And we are nestled on this isthmus between two lakes, not, not even a mile between these two lakes. So we have this amazingly beautiful place and we're not even recycling. So thankfully, our board of trustees said, hey, let's put together an initiative where we should start thinking about sustainability and let's let's get some plans in place and let's move forward. And I think you all know um, that when you decide to, to do something like sustainability in a business, it isn't something that you can just do overnight. It's a process and it takes getting a lot of people on board and everyone kind of having this shared vision, this shared dream of what we're doing, where we're going, how we're going to get there. I will say the biggest challenges that I have found, aside from the money piece, is it's it's a cultural change. And so 
bringing an entire institution, whether you are a, a, a very small business with a couple employees, a middle-sized business, which I would say probably Interlochen is, or a large business, there's a big cultural change and cultural education that has to happen. And people don't like being told what to do. It's, it's like, how do I get everyone to be my partner and my ally in this big project so that we can all share the same vision as we move forward? So needless to say, in 2017, um, we started making some pretty big changes and I started identifying like who are my allies and who are the big stakeholders on our campus and let's create a green team and it's got representatives all the way across our institution so that we can get our whole our whole group on the same page and with some common visions of where are you know where are our problem areas and where are the low hanging fruits that don't cost a lot of money but have a really big cultural change and then where are the high hanging fruits that cost a lot of money but they do also have a big change and so we went through a pretty intensive process to do that um but go ahead and go to the next slide and then I'll jump into that process here in a minute um, like I said, we're we're between these two lakes in Traverse City, Northern Michigan. We're on 1,200 acres, and to be an institution on 1,200 acres is kind of rare because we're a pretty small place. But what that means is we have a lot of trees, and we've got this really gorgeous place. And to not be stewards of the earth and have so much land is is kind of um, apropos. So. We knew that for all the right reasons, this was a good move for us. We are a boarding high school for 500, almost 600 students, but in the summer, we are also a summer camp for over 3,000 students. And uh, during the school year, we've got 49 states. If you're from North Dakota and you wanna send a kid to art school, let me know, cause I got a spot for you. <laughs> it's our 50th state not represented. And um, at Interlochen, we really focus on arts and academics. So we have some of the world's most talented young high school artists. And, and one thing really cool about working with artists is they're extremely passionate individuals. And if you're an artist, you understand this. Like these are very big thinkers, they're passionate thinkers, and they use their art to spread messages of change and things that they really advocate and believe strongly in. So some of that cultural change that I was really kind of struggling with, our students picked up on that and they created videos and songs and 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 uh, poetry and, and bodies of art and were able to disseminate that around our campus and, and kind of help that cultural change along because the kids are like, hey, we really care about this and you adults should too. So that really helped my cause at our business. Go ahead and go to the next screen, please. And um, I just put a couple quick photos in here. This was all a parking lot in 2016. It was a grass parking lot. And the institution said, hey, um, we know you do this organic farming stuff in your, your other life. Do you think you could do something like that here? And, you know, I'm an organic farmer. And I said, well, of course I could do that. What's my budget? And they said, well, we'll give you a couple hundred dollars for some seeds and some tools. And I was like, you're funny. Okay. I don't know about a couple hundred dollars. How about me writing grants? And they're like, you want to write grants? Hired. So, you know, I, I've been at Interlochen for 14 years. I was originally their, one of their college counselors, but I quickly became their, their director of sustainability, which is a part, a department that did not exist prior to me coming, coming here and doing some work. So I got a lot of grant money and we put in this beautiful greenhouse, some hoop houses, these raised beds, all of that green stuff kind of in the middle. Those are native pollinator plants that are native here to uh, northern Michigan. Go ahead into uh, to the next screen, please. Um, and then in an, a couple other subsequent grants, I also put in an outdoor pavilion, which is now my classroom. As long as we can stand outside, I will make them learn in the bitter cold until we all have to move into the greenhouse. And then we also put in an outdoor kitchen, which allows us to then grow food and then cook food. And then we get to eat food together. And sometimes, you know, someone will break out their guitar and now we've got some music. So we're really interested in building this sense of community, this love of nature, this appreciation appreciation for humanity while working all together. And by creating this space, it started out as like 
nobody even knew it was there. And then now it is booked almost every single night in, in the summer um, when we have all of our campers and then almost every single weekend while the weather is nice because everybody wants to come out here. And then I find it is like my foothold to start talking about conservation of monarchs. Hey, do you see the monarch butterfly over there? We talk about conservation of, of water. We've got four solar panels on the next slide. Um, you can see our solar panels. <laughs> And we can talk about conservation of energy and we talk about Interlochen's uh, program that we've now committed to signing on with some green energy. So it's like this foothold for us to be able to start talking about the big changes that we have in mind to show the practices that we're working on. And in fact, gosh, I should have updated this picture because that whole lawn is now filled with wildflowers. There is not a speck of uh, of landscape lawn out there anymore. It's all filled with native wildflowers. So we're increasing our habitat and it allows us to really talk about these sort of ecological and conservation and, and sustainable ideas that we're working on here at Interlochen. Okay, go ahead, next slide, please. And at the heart of everything that we do, because we're a school, is our kids. So we try to get them involved in every single piece. Now, whether you work with kids or not, I think the biggest way we were able to enable change and a lot of change in a really short amount of time was because we had everyone involved in some way that was meaningful to them, whether it was planting trees on Earth Day or planting you know, native wildflowers in, in the fall, whether they're harvesting lettuce or whatever that means for you and your company. For us, it was like getting Getting all of our people involved in some way that resonated with them. And when the kids are here harvesting lettuce and growing lettuce in our aquaponic system, it then goes into our cafeteria. The other half of our food goes to the local food pantry. So we're trying to talk about what we're doing, not just at Interlochen, but also in the expanse around us. Okay, next slide, please. So in 2021, um, you remember we started basically doing this in 2017. 2016 is when they approached me. 2017 is when we started doing some work. By 2019, um, we had done so much work in sustainability that we were actually invited to Washington, D.C. by the U.S. Department of Education, and we received the uh, Green Ribbon School Award. We were one of 34 schools in the entire nation to win that um, Lifetime Achievement Award that year. And that's because of so much work that we had put in in such a short amount of time and the plans for our commitments moving forward. One of those plans was, gosh, we really need to look at what we're doing with our energy on our campus. And you can't measure your growth, you know, your what where you're where you're making achievements or where you're making digressions if you don't have some sort of baseline assessment. So we um, worked with a consultant at Greener U. And we pulled numbers on every one of our buildings. We have um, over 100 buildings on our campus. 50 of them are seasonal. 50 of them are used year round. And we had to look at our energy. We had to look at what's going on and let's get a baseline understanding of where we're at so that we can understand how to make improvements as we move forward. Once we had that baseline assessment done, that really gave us some ideas for where do we go from here? We took that baseline assessment and then we also looked at, um, it's used, it's a model used by mostly um, colleges, uh, higher higher education um, institutions. It's called STARS, S-T-A-R-S. And it's basically a sustainability model to look at your different goals for where you should be doing sustainability on your campus. Go ahead and uh, to the next slide, please. And on that STARS plan, it helped us look at all the different aspects of our campus, whether it's community engagement with like what we're doing with students during orientation, what we're doing with our employees and how we're talking about DEI, where we're doing funding, where our buildings and energy are, are, are um, looking at, at emissions, we dug deeply in every aspect of our operations. And what we ended up finding were some big holes. We are the things that we're doing well, and we pat ourselves on the back and said, great, we're doing those. Those are not going to be in our goals moving forward in the future. We need to make goals based on the holes of where we're not doing really well. So we looked at those holes and we came up with these ideas. Here are the three areas that we really focused on in creating our, our goals for the future. And you'll notice that one of them says buildings and energy. And we're looking at emissions reductions and how we build our buildings and retrofit buildings that are already in existence. Uh, go ahead to the next slide, please. 
And part of that plan was also creating a sustainability vision statement, which is both separate and yet connected to our institution's vision statement. But more specifically, this is looking at us as a community of humans and artists who also care about the earth. So we tried to create some verbiage here that resonated about our, our love and respect and our need to be stewards for both art and nature in this world. Okay, next slide, please. So that is kind of where we connected then with Lindsay. Um, in one of our goals, we're specifically looking at uh, emissions reductions. And we know what our energy emissions were because we've done a baseline assessment. We know where we're at. We looked at our gas, we looked at our fuel oil, we looked at our electricity, and we said, oh my gosh, here's where we are. What can we afford to do and what can't we afford to do? Well, what we can't afford to do is about two thirds of our campus is run on natural gas. And what we can't afford to do is to uh, convert all that elect to electricity. Like we can't afford to do that. But maybe we can afford to put more efficient utilities in. And then we looked at our electricity and said, okay, do we have efficient electric um, utilities? Okay, and that's first step. And second step, where are we getting our electricity from? And then uh, our partnership with Lindsay sort of happened simultaneously at that time because we were really analyzing what we're doing with our electric needs. And Lindsay and Consumers Energy came in and said, hey, we've got this great program and we wanna to talk to you about it. So we had several conversations with them. And in fact, the, the um, things that Lindsay just shared about the predictability and making it user-friendly, like those things are absolutely fantastic. And those are some of the things that we had a little grappling with, like, ooh, we don't know if there's some variable things, but they have really worked to make that program so user-friendly. And uh, consumers has been absolutely fantastic to work with. We were able to then commit to buying um, 30% energy, uh, green energy for the next 10 years. And I would say the biggest struggle was getting our administration on board. Like, how do I convince all of these people that this is a really worthy investment? It's, it's a little more expensive, but it really meets our mission. And when we end up creating pretty rigorous goals, specifically, we made numbers, we must reduce our energy emissions by 15%. And by doing this with Lindsay, we've already been able to commit to reducing our energy by almost our energy emissions by almost 12%. So that's 12 out of our 15%, which was really going to help us meet our energy goals for this round. Um, and this round goes through 2028. And after that, we'll create a new one. And so Lindsay will probably be knocking at your door again for, for an uptick in our energy uh, as we keep moving forward. All right. Um, next slide, please. So, you know, as we're, as our institution is moving forward, we are continuously thinking about that other 3% that we need to get to meet our goal. Um, so that's a, a really exciting thing for us to grapple with. And in fact, we're thinking about an, installing a couple solar, um, solar arrays on rooftops on our buildings right here on campus. And while we are super excited and, and very, very happy with purchasing green energy from consumers, um, we also think there's some really great value in sort of that curb appeal, that street sexiness of being able to see solar panels on your buildings. It gets people talking about it. And then it's a really great gateway for us to say, oh, and by the way, did you also know we've committed to purchasing green energy from consumers? And let's talk about how that looks like and what it does for our campus and for our energy emissions goals. Um, but it's also really cool to be able to see those on our own buildings as, as, a, as a great talking point and also will help us meet our, our goal that we have for reducing our energy emissions for this first round of cuts. So, all right, so last slide. I think I'm out of time. <laughs> Here's my contact uh, info. Again, my name is Emily Umbarger and I'm our Director of Sustainability. And I would love to talk to any of you if you're ever in the Traverse City area and you want to come up for a tour, you want to come visit, um, we're an awesome concert venue. We also have concerts all the time. So we'd love to host a visit for you. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to drop off the slides here for a minute so we can look at each other and have a conversation. Um, and I do encourage everyone to, to drop um, questions into the chat or to come off mute and, and ask. But um, just to get the ball rolling, um, First of all, Emily, I just loved all of the, the stakeholder engagement that you talked about. Um, you know, when we're training people on how to build their business case for clean energy, it really, you know, takes sitting down and thinking through 
who are your stakeholders and how are you going to get them engaged and feel like um, this is just not another thing that you're adding to their list, but, but, you know, getting them engaged. So I love what you were talking about there um, and how, you know, your future plans, uh, you know, are looking at rooftop solar so that you can continue to get people engaged and excited about, um, you know, what's on the campus. And so I'd love to, if you could, you know, tell us a little bit about how you're approaching uh, on-site um, procurement or, or even if you've gotten, <laughs> gotten far enough um, in that journey yet. Yeah, uh, great question, Ashby. So um, I am working with two people. One um, is a, uh, I want to say they're like experts in solar energy at Yoda Energy there. I believe they're out of Texas. And they've connected us with a solar installer, which is here regional in Michigan. And so we've been having sort of these conversations together with, hey, here's what our diagrams of our buildings look like. What would this cost us? What would our efficiency be? They're also walking us through um, what those credits would look like if we um, applied for the uh, IRA credits right now that are, are happening in our government, which I'd say if you're interested in installing your own solar, don't wait because those might not be around for a long time. Um, and we're a nonprofit, and those are uh, credits that are really given to institutions that are not nonprofits. So they're helping us navigate that as well because there's a way to do that. So lots of conversations. And again, also getting our stakeholders to buy in that this is a, a worthy investment because you know it's it's not cheap, but what deals are out there right now with with those um, rebate credits is it's making it really, really affordable for people that are in small and medium sized businesses. Um, I don't know if I mentioned we're a like I think 6.7 megawatt electric user. So I don't know if that makes us a medium size or small size. I'm sure Lindsay can <laughs> differentiate. But um, yeah, you know, we're not looking to create a ton, but conversation is key there. And and working with people who are in the field and have our best interests at stake has been really helpful. Wonderful. Um, and then another question just for, for Lindsay and Emily, I'd love to um, hear a little bit about how you would suggest that an energy customer that's not already active with their utility would start conversations. Um, you know, maybe you have a utility rep that you talk to once a year, maybe you don't have a dedicated utility rep. How do you start those conversations as a smaller business? I would first recommend, so if you don't know who your rep is, then go on to the utility website and they should have a renewable program page and they'll have a contact information. I think the best is a one on one discussion. Um, so then you can share your story and the, the team at the utility can match make you with the right programs. Um, I want to say that our most utilities, we have a suite of clean energy products and the best way to become sustainable is energy efficiency, like use less energy, <laughs> of course. Simple idea, but we have a, a ton of, I know that this is very well established in the market. You can get free energy advisors to come out to your facility, do walkthroughs, give you guidance and ideas on how to use less energy, and we'll give you the rebates to do that. And then you can partner with, okay, now that you're as lean as you can be, how about you purchase renewable energy to offset the remaining of your carbon footprint? Um, and I think the one-on-one -on -one discussion um, especially because there's so many unique questions and one size does not fit all with renewable energy procurement. So that would be my recommendation. And I would just add that we, I believe they reached out to us, our, our energy consultant reached out to us and um, our director of utility, our director of, <laughs> this is not utilities, uh, but he works with all of our utilities and buildings and operations, director of operations. There you go. He's like, Emily, hey, we got something really cool. I know we've been talking about this. He also sits on our green team. And so when I'm saying have those stakeholders on your team, um, those are really important allies to have. And so, you know, we jumped on it right away when we, we heard about it and we started the conversations because we knew it would be a lot of red tape for us to get through on our side, even before we could get too far uh, um, and, and before we could get this approved by our administration. So, um, yeah, we were really grateful to have the fantastic group at Consumers and they have been more than willing to meet us and talk with us a hundred times if we needed to answer a lot of emails um, and, and really go the extra mile. So we felt really safe in that relationship with them. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for, for sharing your stories.